for the deen that he did not fear. And that several times we're gonna see inshallah, many in many times the, the Prophet's uncle came to him and spoke to him alone and said, Oh Muhammad, are you going to put up with all of this? It's getting a little bit too much when it got of course more, you know, when it became a bit more severe in terms of his safety. And the Prophet said, I will never leave off this duty that I'm upon because this is from you know an order from Allah Azza wa Jalla. So of course we have to know that when this happened at the time after he he ascended upon the, the mountain, what happened was the people of course left and they knew that of course the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is calling the people to something strange. And before that they did get signs because they saw certain people doing certain things gathering together. And from them were the big, the people that came Muslim in the beginning, Ibn Abbas عنه, and Abu Bakr al-Siddiq and these people in Uthman. So when this happened in the beginning, people started being suspicious, but they weren't sure or they did not know exactly what was happening. So upon this event, many things, it was like basically them is the opener of all events. Him going upon this mountain and calling the people to Islam. So afterwards, some of the people, meaning the sons of Quraysh, or the relatives of Quraysh, after them knowing that the Prophet is starting to call to something, what happened was they heard that people are gathering together in certain places. So they got scared. Because now Quraysh, of course, you have to understand they have a reputation. The reputation is that the Arabs are intact. There is no problems between themselves. And of course, it's a place for trade. And people come from Muslim al Hajj. They see them performing Hajj around the Kaaba the way they used to perform it upon Shirk. And of course, without a doubt, they were known and they had some sort of status within the people outside. So, of course, now something new has come to their place in Mecca. So they're scared for the people when they come because Hajj was close. They're scared of what? They're scared of them seeing the Arabs separated and having problems. And of course, without that, this, was called, this will cause them problems. So they used to gather together. Does anybody know the place they used to gather together? What was the name of the place all of them used to gather together? The heads of the tribes of Quraysh. It's called Darul Arqam. Darul Arqam. That was the place where they used to all gather together. And this place, you can see it. Sorry, what was the mountain called? Where Safa, or the Sal. So this, so this place, Darul Arqam, was the place where they used to all gather together, the people of Quraysh. And it was like a meeting spot, when they used to have important meetings, gatherings that were important, when people used to come from outside, they used to basically host them in this place. So then they gathered together, the heads of Quraysh in Darul Arqam. For example, the, the father of Khalid ibn Walid. So Walid, Utbah ibn Rabi'a, you have Abu Jahl, Abu Lahab, Umar ibn Khattab and all of those that were you know from the leaders of or the heads of Quraysh they used to gather together so when this started happening Ikhwani, they used to of course gather together and they, they called for a council meeting because they needed to somehow get rid of this problem that they saw that was starting so after doing so they did this and as soon as they did this the people that were upon the religion of Islam at the time they started getting scared so after this what happened was, those that were upon Islam, of course they weren't present in the meeting. Reason being is because what? They know that what these people are upon is falsehood. So of course this also started to, to you know, get the people to be aware that something definitely is happening in the city of Mecca. And then upon doing so, when they used to gather together, they realized that the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam is doing something, but they did not know that he is calling Islam. They didn't know what it was. They didn't know that he's saying he's a messenger. So then of course without a doubt after time went by, some of them gathered together and said that why do not we or one of us go to him and offer him all the wealth in the world at the time or the woman or status. We can give him anything as long as he stops doing what he's doing. We don't know what it is because they didn't know what it was. And before I go into the first migration of Habasha, we need to understand what happened. The people they got tortured. A lot of the people got tortured and from those that got tortured in the beginning were those that were weak. Those that were weak and didn't have any status. So the Prophet Muhammad in the beginning, he didn't get tortured in the very beginning. Why? Because his uncle was protecting him and it wasn't so strong and they weren't great in number. So from the people that got tortured was Bilal radiallahu anhu when he became a Muslim. And also from them were after they became Muslim, al Yasir, the, the, the family of Yasir. So Sumayya and, and her husband Yasir and her son 
What was her son's name? Hamar. So the family of Yasid, they were the ones that got tortured also in the beginning. So these were the people that were being tortured and they used to gather them in a place. Some of them they say it's called Honda, some of them say it's Bakha. Different narrations say different things, but it was a place that was in the center of what? Of Quraysh, in uh, Mecca, sorry. And this place, they used to gather them at this place, and this place was a place that it was, because it was open land. You have to imagine Mecca is a desert place, open land. And when did they used to gather them? Just to show you that how cruel they were. They would gather them when the sun is at the hottest, the peakest of the heat. The peak of the heat. That's when they would gather the, those that they would beat that they wanted to torture. Once they found out they were upon the Islam and they were upon the religion of Muhammad. So they would gather them together and then they would torture them until they would obviously their aim was to what? To try and force them to leave off Islam. So when they were gathered, and from them of course we know the famous story, story of Bilal radiallahu anhu, that he embarrassed his uh, as you can say his master, meaning that the person that was in charge of him, because he was a slave at the time. So Islam was a means of him escaping this cruel, you know, abuse that he was facing from his master or the person that was in charge of him. And Bilal radiallahu anhu, you have to know and realize that he, of course, without a doubt, when he was being tortured, he used to always say, No. What did he used to always say? No. What did he used to always say? No. I had an ahad. Literally meaning he didn't care how badly he was being tortured because the aim of the, tra- the leaders of the Quraysh was to gather the people that became Muslim and embarrass them to show them look at what these people have you know uh, started to believe in it's not going to save them we're going to embarrass them in front of everyone but the aim failed when it came to Bilal or the, you know, the reason why his master gathered him together and gathered all the people was so that he can torture him so that he can stop believing in Allah and his messenger stop believing in Islam so then of course what they will do is they'll put a rock on top of him and make him literally suffer stay in the heat until all he wanted him to say was that I you know denounce my my my, my religion that's all he wanted him to say but Bilal and all the rest the, the family of Yasir as well they did not give up in believing in Allah and of course they did not denounce Islam so we know the famous story that Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and this is found in Bukhari Muslim that he used to go and see them being what? Being tortured and being punished and being abused. So he would give money to the people that were in charge of those slaves. So he would free them. And doing so, of course, without a doubt, helped them. But the family of Yasir, meaning Yasir and Sumayya and Ammar, they were not slaves. Because Sumayya, she came from Habasha. And Ammar was from Yemen. And they married and their son was Ammar. So he was not allowed to buy off Yasir and his family because they were not slaves. So they stayed there being tortured. And the Prophet ﷺ made dua for them at the stage when they were being tortured. And he used to go fast and see them because they weren't able to do anything. Because they weren't great in number. And this just shows you wisdom in terms of making a move or doing something. It's done by wisdom. Look at how the da'wah started. It started in secret. So just a reminder to ourselves, myself first and foremost, and others listening, that when you give da'wah to your parents, to your siblings, to your own children, whoever it may be, it doesn't have to be all at once, which maybe could be too much for them. But it could just be a small stages. Because that was started, كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم, إن هذا غريبا. وسيعود غريبا فطوبى للغرباء. This religion came as something strange. It was, it was small in number. And it's going to return as something strange, which is the time we live in today. فطوبى للغرباء. Especially the time you live in. Let's say you're giving da'wah to your parents. It could, they could be difficult for, the, for, you, for them to accept that which you're giving them to. In terms of da'wah So it doesn't all have to be words It could even be actions And we have to always bear that in mind and understand So of course without a doubt We know that Sumayya radiallahu anha Was the first martyr in Islam Because she did not give up in terms of Proclaiming la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah And of course Yasir as well He was too old and he died as well And Ammar um, His story we won't go into But he said what they wanted him to say But he still had iman in his heart Alhamdulillah, the ulama say that if one is in a situation like this where you know, he's, he's, got, he's at gunpoint or they, you know, they're threatening to kill him, then he can utter the statements of disbelief but not believing it in the heart. So, this is the condition that what? That Ahmad did not believe what he said, but he just said it out of just for the sake that he would free himself from the situation he was in. And then he went to the Prophet to complain in terms of he was upset himself at what he did. 
The Prophet of course gave him like tidings that what he did is it's allowed in the religion of Islam. So after this happened, when the torture became you know too severe for those for people to bear, and it was too much, because a lot of them were being abused, a lot of them were being denounced from their family members. What happened was the order of Hijrah to migrate the to migrate or to immigrate to Abyssinia to Hab to, to, to Habasha was made. So this happened when the Mushrikeen, the Quraysh, started abusing the Muslims and torturing them too much. And they used to of course say that Prophet Muhammad is Majnoon, he's crazy. He's a sorcerer. And they used to say all sorts of things. So the Prophet gathered the people and he said to them, For those of you that are capable and able to do so, then go to this place, Abyssinia. Why? The place in Habasha, they have a king who's kind and merciful. And he's upon the religion of Christianity. And he does not oppress any of those that come to his land. So this happened. And when did this happen? When did they migrate to Abyssinia? Does anyone know? What year was it? When did they migrate? It was the fifth year after Prophethood. So after the fifth year, that's when the Prophet ordered them to migrate to Abyssinia. And the number in terms of Muslims was 11 men and four women. 11 men and four women were those that left from Mecca to Ethiopia. And does anybody know from the you know from from the from the numbers who whom were those that left? Come on, Ikhwan, this is basic. We should know in terms of the first hijrah. From them was Uthman ibn Affan, Uthman ibn Affan, who was the third Khalifa. Salam to the Salam to the Uthman ibn Affan and his wife. Who was his wife? The Prophet said. Barakallah. What's your name, Akhi? Nabil, Barakallah, who's Nabil? Ruqayya, who was the daughter of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Uthman was from those that left. So once again, there were 11 men and four, four women that left from Mecca to go to this place. And of course, when they reached there, of course, without a doubt, the king accepted them well and hosted them. And we have to realize and understand that when they went there, eventually the Quraysh, they found out that the people had left to go to this place. And they were scared because they used to also do trade in this place. So they were scared they were going to go there and inform them of their new religion. And maybe they'll get more in number or they'll increase in number. Or maybe they'll seek this king to be an ally to them. But this didn't happen, alhamdulillah, because Allah aided them and helped them. So when this happened, they stayed there for a period of time. And does anybody know whom, or who was sent from Quraysh? There was a person sent from Quraysh to go after them. There was a specific person sent from Quraysh to go after them. To try and tell the king that these people are upon a religion that goes against Christianity. Because that was the whole, you know, the whole reason was so that they can destroy Islam. That's what they wanted. That was their past, to destroy Islam. So there was a specific person who was sent. Who eventually became Muslim. Sufyan. Not Sufyan. Does anybody know? Okay, I'm gonna leave that as homework for next week then, instead of telling you guys. Who was the person that came after the Muslims to go to where? To Abyssinia to go and try and tell the king about this religion that is against Christianity. We don't want to go into details. But when he was there and he reached, eventually he met the king and he was close friends with the king because he used to do trade and business with the king. And what happened was, was that he was given time to speak because the king said, okay, let me hear it from you. Because he tried to come and convince the king that what they're upon goes against Christianity. So then he brought the Muslims and one of the leaders of the Muslims at the time, who was, who was the one that was the one that spoke or debated this specific person that came from Quraysh. Okay, that's also homework number two. So who was the one that went after the Muslims? And who was the one that debated this man that came? So that's the second piece of homework, inshallah. And what was the name of the king that was there? What was the name of the king? What was the name of the king? 
The name of the king was Najashi. Najashi, and, and according to the correct opinion of the ulama, that which comes in many hadith, Tirmidhi and Bukhari, Muslim, is that he died a Muslim. He accepted Islam because the Prophet Sallallahu ordered the companions to play to pray the janaza prayer for the one that is not present because of course he was not in Mecca at the time he was in Abyssinia when he passed away so he eventually accepted Islam this king eventually they came back some of them came back why because they heard news that Islam had grown at this time of course the event back in Mecca now the events taking place in Mecca is that more people became Muslim so they were growing and increasing in number they were becoming stronger they're becoming stronger and stronger so when they heard this some of them thought okay we can go back to our place we can go back to our home homeland which is mecca and upon doing so some of them did go back some of them did go back only to find that it wasn't true and they did not conquer mecca but rather they just increased in numbers so again the prophet ﷺ gave permission to those that wanted to return back or to make hijrah so there was two immigrations before the immigration of mecca to medina there was two, the first one which happened in the fifth year and then the second one which happened afterwards because they thought, that's what they did, they thought that Islam had become widespread across Mecca which wasn't true. So this time when they went back, 83 men went to Habasha this time round. The first time how many men? We said 11 and 4 women. This time round. 83 men went so now it's just a proof to show you that what Islam started as something strange and it grew and increased just like if you look at our day, day and age today we live in today Alhamdulillah Islam is widespread you find Islam everywhere because people are finding the truth so 83 men and 18 women were those that left from Mecca to go to Habasha And we have to bear in mind and realize that of course the trip to these places for example if you look at the map from Mecca to Habasha is a far trip all on what? all on camel and horse and foot no public transportation no nice cars no comfortability and they were doing this for the sake of Allah just to show you that Islam came as something strange but because of the hearts of the people and how pure the, their hearts were they conquered lands they conquered lands they conquered lands and it just shows you and it proves you that Islam it did come as something strange but of course without a doubt when something is a son haq and it's based on the truth for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal they managed to come to lands and then of course we know the great event that took place afterwards was Hamza who was who was Hamza bin Abi Talib sorry Hamza bin Abdul Muttalib who was he the uncle very good Hamza bin Abdul Muttalib was the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa now how did he become a Muslim? Does anybody know the story? Because he was a fearsome man, he was someone that was literally known. He was fearsome, he was strong, he was brave, he had courage. And Islam at the time he didn't have anyone as strong. Because Abu Bakr Sadiq of course, without that he had status, he had status. He was rich, he was wealthy, he was a businessman. But at the same time they didn't have anyone that was courageous at the time. So they needed someone to come and enter Islam to help them in terms of, in terms of the abuse of the Quraysh. So his story was, in terms of how he became a Muslim, was that he left. At the time when Prophet ﷺ started giving that what he had left. Because of course they used to go and do trade and they used to do other things. So he had left on his horse to do things that he needed to do from his own affairs. And then when he came back he heard, because at the time before he came back, a great event took place. Which was that Abu Jahl had cursed the Prophet ﷺ and hit him. Because it was too much of him you know, increasing in numbers, they were increasing in numbers. Abu Jahl got annoyed, got angry, it was too much, he couldn't take it. So he hit the Prophet ﷺ. And of course without a doubt they couldn't do anything. They didn't have power, they didn't have the quwa to do anything, to fight back. Which just shows us how blessed we are today. We have Islam, we're able to come to the Masajid, which is ni'mah from Allah Azza wa Jal. We didn't go through the things that they went through, so at the very least, that's why we should try our utmost best to know and learn about our religion. To see how it came. A few numbers, conquered lands because of the fact that it was based upon Iman there was no deficiency or any sort of things within their hearts and that's why they managed to do so many things Islam is something great 
something great for Allah Azza wa Jal to choose and to bless you to be upon the religion of Islam. Wallah Azim, ma afdal, yani there's nothing. Ma fi shayin afdal fi hayatik. Except that you are Muslim. There isn't anything more than that is, you know, it's, it's, as you can say, it's icing upon the cake. But just because the fact that you're Muslim and you wake up being a Muslim, and you ask, and that's why we should ask Allah Azza wa Jal and your motive on Islam, that we die upon Islam, there is nothing greater. Because you're up, upon Islam, the greatest nations from the nations of since the beginning of time is the nation of Muhammad Sallallahu So just you to be a Muslim in itself is a blessing, Allah. But it shouldn't make you be arrogant as some people are. But rather you should ask Allah Azza wa Jal, كَمَا قَالَ النَّبِيُّ سَلَّمْ وَهُوَ أَفْرَ الْخَلْقِ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَالسَّمَاءِ And we all know this, he's the best of mankind in this heaven and the earth. He used to ask Allah every single time, يَا مُقَلِّبَ الْقُلُوبِ ثَبِّتْ قَلْبِ عَلَى دِينِكِ O oh, twister and turn of the hearts, keep my heart first, firm and steadfast upon your religion. But being upon Islam is a great blessing. Great, great, great blessing. So we shouldn't take advantage. Or well, not just that, but we shouldn't see it as something easy. And we end on this note is that he came back and he was informed of what Abu Jahl has done to his nephew. I have to bear in mind, this is a fearsome, strong, courageous man. He doesn't take anything from anyone. So as soon as he heard this, he went to where Abu Jahl was, which was Masjid al Masjid al Haram. He was next to the Kaaba, and he went straight away and he hit Abu Jahl with his the, the the bow. You know how you have the bow and arrow. He took it from his shoulder and he hit him across the face. And the people gathered together around him to try and what start a fight. But Abu Jahl stopped him. He stopped the people and he informed them that verily I have cursed. And I have cursed and embarrassed his nephew to verily leave him. And when he did this, he said, Do you not know that I am upon the same religion and I say the same things that my nephew say? So after doing so, after you know relieving his anger and hitting, what you can say getting revenge from his nephew, he went and he accepted Islam. And this is when the people of Quraysh started getting scared because he entered Islam after this. And this is when Islam started to grow. And it started to become stronger in its roots because now they have someone like Hamza and Abdul Muttalib on their side, someone that's fierce and someone that is strong. And inshallah, we end there and we conclude. Subhanakallahumma alhamdulillah, shalla wa la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Hada wa sallam wa sallam wa nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tabi'an bi ihsan ila yawm al-deen. Wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Oh, inshallah, Jazakallah Khamzah. Inshallah, next week will be after Asr the lesson, just because Maghrib is coming earlier. So next week, inshallah, the lesson will be after Asr. Jazakallah Khamzah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allah.